and today we're gonna talk about a topic that we are very interested in because we're gonna talk about mental health and how it does affect our life every day, every moment. Yeah, and it's kind of going to be like a female perspective because you cannot tell we're all girls. So that's gonna be interesting. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, I think it's gonna be interesting. So starting off with mental health, maybe share if any of us have experienced some issues, what we understand by mental health, let's say. I don't know. Whatever you feel comfortable with sharing. Um, what so, speaking, like personally speaking, I am not ashamed to like admit that I am clinically non-neurotypical, meaning that I do have like mental health issues and problems with like BPD, depression and anxiety. And let me tell you that it gets so intense, especially like in the first year of university, because um, a large percentage, I think, of the freshmen come to this university without any support. Like, they don't yeah. know other people, they probably don't have, like, relatives who have been here or cousins, and it's just the feeling of being so alienated, you know, because as soon as you walk into campus, everyone is, like, establishing their groups uh, with the same interests and stuff like that, and sometimes for introverted people, or I don't know insecure people it's so hard to fit in and the sad part is that you feel so alone because no one technically cares about you because no one technically knows you and it demotivates you so much to like even try <coughs> to make an impression to people you're just like okay and you like spiral into depression and dark thoughts and stuff like that and you feel so alone and i feel like there are not enough people talking about this because everyone is like so head in to socializing yeah. and stuff like that and going to clubs getting the full experience the drinks and whatever there is and the sad part is that most of these groups are gonna break up they do <laughs> yeah they, they do. are gonna break up <laughs> yeah don't expect to have the same group of years throughout college yeah. yeah, and there is so much drama going on and so much stuff just stressing you out even more than the lessons already are. And I th I feel like AUBG students are very elitist. Mm -hmm. Like, they, they choose a certain crowd of people and everyone who is not, like, who doesn't complete the characteristic that they need for that group, they're like, okay, this person is a poser, this person is like this, this person is like that. And I uh, I really don't like the differentiations. Those are and very like, specific opinions for someone who's been here for three months. Yeah, 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 yeah man. I am just been hanging out for the year. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess just uh, staying in solitude and choosing mm -hmm. to like kind of distance myself from a crowd it made me realize a lot of things and it made me not want to interfere with many people. Did you have like uh, bad experiences with people that uh, they have made you like feel... Uh... Oh yeah, yes, everyone is so judgmental because uh, if people can't already tell I, I have a very flamboyant look. I like making an impression, impression and like I want people to see me in the street and just like turn their head back once more <laughs> and be like, yo, what the hell is this girl wearing? Is she serious? And people tend to think that that is like kind of a show off thingy, mm -hmm. like, hey, I want all the attention on me. But really it's just like a form of self-expression and stuff and people really don't like it when you seem like you have stuff figured out in a field of life, be it like your appearance or the way that you try to portray yourself and everyone just focuses on like the the rank that you have in the AUBG society, like your reputation and stuff, mm -hmm. which is very dumb, like let's just enjoy university and like experience everything and meet everyone and give everyone a chance, like it doesn't, it doesn't have to be so divided. Yeah. But I do agree that there's a division because even I, when I see you, for example, uh, let's say currently I see the sushi and I'm like, okay, yeah, yeah. Japanese culture. So <laughs> I immediately say she might be someone I'd want to talk to, or if you're draw, you know, dressed basically, I'd be like, okay, maybe she's not someone. You'll have a thing for Japanese. I do. You know, she, she does. does. She does. I, I do. I've seen it all. <laughs> yeah, I do, and uh, I automatically do that with people when I. I see. I see that you're right because I'm a third year and I actually. Hate but the thing is that, that. Th this isn't like high school anymore. It's uh, AUBG is known for the diversity mm -hmm. and.
and I'm putting quotations because we all know that that isn't true. So why why deprive yourself of the experience and why be so nationalist? Like we are all here to get a diploma and to get the full university experience. So why just create a drama and just talk about people and just judge people? Because it's such a small community. Look, like, yeah, go. Going back to depression, uh, I think that judging is part of depression. Like, just by the thought that you judge, like, you are judged, like, it provokes insecurities in you. I mean, your perception of me is a reflection of you, so mm -hmm. your insecurities are what you're projecting. Yeah. So that's why I don't mind people. You know, there's no such thing as bad publicity or like bad attention. So it's kind of empowering when people's lives are so boring that the only way that they can get like an interesting conversation out of themselves is by mentioning you. Yeah. But it's it mm. kind of also takes a toll on you. Okay. I, I think we're kind of like spreading a lot into one thing. I, I'd like to talk about more about mental health in general. But first, going up to what you said, um, I think most of the things you said were quite general. It's not just a UBG, it's not just high school, it's just how society works. It's just how we work as people and I know it's sad, but that's how it is. And I, I, I think it's not, just, it's not just college, it's not just high school. This, we're gonna experience this in the workplace. Five years, 10 years from now, we're gonna experience this everywhere. Like whenever we have any kind of contact with other human beings, you're gonna have that sort of approach. You're gonna have groups divided. You're, you're gonna have all of that because that's sort of people people tend to divide based on their interests and everything so that's that's something that we're going to deal with all the time even though it's not good as you guys said and um but why how we can like s make this topic more specific to UBG is if we start like if you guys start to talk about how your mental health situation changed before coming to UBG, uh, uh, actually after coming to UBG, uh, compared to what My it was back home. <laughs> I was a like, piece of shit back then. I'm a piece of shit right now. <laughs> um, did it like mm, yeah, what make happened? an impact on you, or yeah. did it make yeah. it worse? Did it make it better? Okay. Is the community here different from the one you were used to? Okay, Claire, go ahead and then I'll say so that you see some old people experience. Yeah, go. Um. Have you ever like um, no, no 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 you speak yeah you speak how did it impact you coming yeah, to like, ABG yeah oh <laughs> um before and after ABG like what's the difference I doesn't have any difference yeah. honestly I would say that just knowing that you're you're now supposed to be a responsible adult you're in full control of when yeah. you go to classes mm -hmm. what classes you choose what you do with your free time you have literally no supervision. And uh, to people who are also kind of yeah, struggling with mental health, responsibility feels it, heavy. Yes, it yeah. is so heavy because sometimes uh, coming from like you know back home with your parents there, knowing almost like most of the locals and stuff like that, you feel like there is an outside force that will just pull you back out of that void and just get your life in order. Mm -hmm. But it's just not gonna happen. And instead of being so depressed about this, coming to UBG, I learned that you should just embrace what you're going through and just push through it. Because it's just you and you trying to reach that diploma. And if you just like let yourself sit back, nothing is gonna happen. Yeah, I think that um, like the stages, um, basically at the age of 18, 19, we're going through this separation from uh, parents. So we have to like find our independence and like wildness in like social life and experimenting a lot. And then we go to the age of 21 where we separate ourselves from uh, the social life. We try to reconnect with our parents, but we try to create the indep uh, independence. independence of who we are and what do we want from life and everything. Yeah. And these are like two stages that are so close to each other. And they are so contradictory with each other that like it does um, it does um, bring you lots of challenges and struggles and uh, I think that LBG is like it gives very good support they have uh, psychology uh, professors that are very um, 
inter like they're interacting with students all the time and then we have and also the psychologist every person with like family issues have has always appreciated like the presence of a good English teacher honestly <laughs> if, if you never had a special connection to your English teacher at least once you're a lucky person you don't have problems <laughs> I I have a life saving tip for like mental health issues if you're starting university and you just feel so overwhelmed and you just want to like create this social base please don't just don't invest yourself too much into people now i'm not saying like you know just get rid of all of your friend groups but most of the things that you share and you do they're gonna come back to bite you in the ass because you're gonna be in this university with these people for four whole years yeah. even if you don't want to even if you don't change, they will change. Their mentality will change. It's just good to keep a lot to yourself and not just be so out there so people can attack you and just focus True. on it. Sure, but I think everyone is having their own issues and like... Yeah, uh, it's kind of a coping mechanism. We I are guess. sometimes like projecting like our issues to other people. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes like, you know, we are not feeling in our mood, like, yeah. you know? Like you just wake up in the morning and you're like, okay, I don't want to leave today, but I have to leave because I have exams classes and mom mom pays for the tuition fees of this semester so yeah we all think like uh, i won't <laughs> yeah. die jess. mom will cry you yeah. know jess jess always says to me she's like i uh want to kill myself but i can because i'm first semester my mom just paid the tuition yeah jess well, yeah. i am <laughs> i'm a senior <laughs> if you do it do it now not after like paying eight semesters. Okay, don't make it a habit to, to give that sort of advice to people, please. <laughs> just do it, guys. Bad advice. It's just save don't. your life. Mm. Okay. There are different approaches to it, you know. Like, yeah, I, I think we should go to Helen. <laughs> so what I wanted to share is because I wanted to see if others experienced it. Uh, you know, I'm re currently very happy with what I have mm. in ABG. That's nice. Uh, I still have mental breakdowns, <laughs> don't get me wrong. Be be because that's like, I feel like friends, social life, university, and uh, clubs, it, it, I'm kind of balancing that. My current s struggle is love life. So the thing is that I never paid atten attention to it to the first and second year, and finally I get to that, and that's where I started to struggle. But I definitely did struggle my first year, and it was because I worked so hard you know, from 8th to 12th grade, and actually I was in the same school from 5th to 12th grade, you know, to build a social life, to build exactly. everything. Exactly. And then I come here, and everything there Gone. crashes, because someone went to Sophie, someone went to yeah. Holland, someone went to... They, they split, and everything I had built, all the social connection that I felt comfortable in, exactly. I had to come here and made it all from scratch. But that's life, Thank and that's the beauty of it. Uh, I I was but happy. We do, we do keep connections. We do keep connections, but it's not the same. It, no, That's not your same bubble the anymore. Same. I mean, we do change like yeah, every we day do change. when we yeah, the thing learn with, something new. The thing with your old friends is that <laughs> you, learn. you probably <laughs> still connect with your old friends because it's been like three months since you you know disconnected. But the thing is that with me, it's been three years. They do not understand yeah. anything I share with them. People, yeah, yeah, yeah. Events, but they don't either. I don't either. Yeah, but you're, you're not you're not going to the same events anymore. You're yeah. not seeing the same people. Yeah, yeah. You don't know the same people yeah, anymore. Exactly. So every conversation is going to be you trying to explain, explain. what's happening yeah. without them having a background, yeah, yeah. and every conversation turns awkward exactly. and weird. So it it's just sad. doesn't work out, and you have to, you know, you, you have to do something here because you do need that comfortable environment. Yeah, yeah. it you can't cope with it alone for uh, uh, quite some time, but then you you need that support. And, uh, that's exactly yeah. it. I mean I the, the key is actually. to just like not sick for it but if it comes to you exactly you embrace yeah, it yeah. but at the same time yeah, I was but at the same time we're, we're social come. creatures yeah. so I, I think, think so. we're gonna seek we're gonna seek for it even if like even if we try not to it I, I it's not something I do voluntarily I personally um, I um, always I considered myself like okay so like I'm on my own okay like my parents are giving me the roof and the food and the financial support and everything but like even in the social life i know that they have their own things going on so i've always been like on my own trying to like do things i like find my hobbies yeah. and then you know like when things like come around and you meet friends and you meet yeah. social life um 
you do get attached to people i think and uh, we do suffer the moment that we get detached or we uh, feel like we're misunderstood or something and uh, that's a moment when we misunderstand yeah. the other person as well and <laughs> and yeah <laughs> that's so I, don't, don't you ever like feel like you're alone in this world like you are <laughs> We are. I mean, we are. We are. It's kind of the only people who love us unconditionally are our parents. But yeah. we and those of uh, us who are lucky, <laughs> a soulmate or something. My my mom has conditions for me. <laughs> She's like, you have to do this, 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 and that. Okay, I will love you. <laughs> I I'll think of it. <laughs> she sounds very much like you, Claire. I can Honestly. see where you get it from. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect resemblance. <laughs> I mean, uh, what is um, it? The uh, Dar that being be dar, the pear falls off. doesn't fall far from, from the, the tree. tree. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. So I felt like you wanted to yeah. share something. So going back to what Helen was saying, um, that's that's the thing. Uh, for some people, I guess, AOBG didn't really like moving away and everything didn't really make a big com like impact in their lives or mental health. But in my case, it was pretty drastic because um back home especially like from from when i was 13 to 18 i got um that's in eighth grade like that's when i started hanging out with my group of friends um that's basically when yeah. i started making making those friends like from scratch like that group of friends and everything eighth grade how old were you then eighth grade ninth grade something 14, like that like 14, 14. 15 that's, that's yeah, yeah. Basically, that's when I started uh, hanging out with a new group of people, definitely. and that was basically I spent like three to four or five years, something like that, um, building those relationships. And I came to a point where I felt extremely comfortable, and I slowly started becoming really extroverted, and I started not having problems with anxiety anymore because um, I, I became really comfortable in the environment I worked in, lived in. And especially in that, like the last four or five years, I got the chance to work with a lot of organizations, festivals, and I I got to be I got to I be the, the face of a lot of activities and the voice of a lot of activities. I got to host events, and at some point, especially the last two years, um, a lot of people back home like would recognize me because. Kosovo is a small country and I would work like mainly in the capital in my the city I lived in so basically everyone there the activities and the volunteers and the 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 people that would organize things it will it would all circle back to the same people you know because there's not so many people that do volunteer work and all that so basically so, I I had this big community of people who always knew like whenever I walked into a room people would know who I am and they everyone would recognize me and talk to me and I didn't really have that the the sort of anxiety you have when you meet people for the first time, because I are like I basically worked, um, I I had five years of work done to to settle a reputation, and when I finally got like the reputation I wanted, I didn't have to like make an effort anymore because people already recognized me from that. So when I came here, I had completely forgotten what it's like for no one to know who you are and no one to care who you are. Yeah. So when I walked through the doors like of campus the, the first time I was in a new country um, with completely new people and when I when I when I got here for the first time I was like, "Oh, so I have to do that like first all scratch. over again. I don't have a reputation anymore. Yeah. No one knows my name, no one knows who I am." So you you basically everything so that's when i when i my personality like did a, a flip because i that's i had this voice like peeping inside my head the whole time that said like every word you say and every every move you make like that's how people are going to know you from now on because they don't have a backstory they don't know what you did until now they don't know what kind of person you are so everything you do in front of them that's gonna be their perception of you. But does it which really terrifies me? Exactly. Exactly. That's exactly. my point. Exactly. You know, I, I understand, but that's not something that's not something I control. Like yeah, yeah, that yeah, kind yeah, of perception is, not something, is not something it's not something that I that I think of voluntarily. Yeah. It's just something that has been engraved in my head and it it's not leaving. So uh, when I when you I, know what I the think? more people I met that, that, that feeling like terrified me, the feeling of them judging me like without any backstory, anything, like being all out there in the open, yeah. it was scary. I think um, that uh, people judge no matter what, like, exactly. 
you, you having, are gonna even say. if you're the best, yeah, even if you're the most confident. Like uh, people have opinions, and uh, we have opinions, and we are not supposed to like everyone because I think that psychologically we are supposed to like get more along with people that we have more things in common and that we share, you know, and uh, experiences that we go through together. If we like have things in common, uh, will like make us more like um, connected. Right, and um, make you bond even more. Right, and I think that like once we get to know each other and like be comfortable with each other, that we're like okay, we are who we are, we do mistakes, we are human beings, and we should like let go firstly of us judging ourselves, mm-hmm. being like oh my god, why did I say that? Yeah. Fuck it. It. Those people <laughs> won't remember say that. It. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's like it's a mentality. Thing. In one thousand years, we're gonna be all gone. I mean, unless we become something huge, which I don't think. <laughs> I mean, I hope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> okay, would you like to end on something more positive, maybe an advice or something? I have I have a question. Okay. So why do you think you have struggles with love life right now? Don't you think that it's Me? because? Yeah, you she said, said positive. <laughs> she said positive lo- love life. No, she said, she like, said a positive, positive approach positive. to life. Ah. Yeah, she wants to <laughs> drift to my head. Okay, not that. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to stand the uh, you know, yeah, podcast yeah, yeah. with something more positive. Because whoever watches this might be struggling with yeah. whatever we just mentioned. And, uh, you know, stand with um, whoever um, Listening to Kanye West really motivates <laughs> you. Like, I recommend it to everyone. I know that they're going to say that, like... Is a Trump supporter? No, stop it. Kanye is a genius, and his music will make you like reach the top. <laughs> One, two. <laughs> <is Okay. laughs> um, if you're having a bad day, a bad moment, you hate yourself. You think that everyone hates you. Take a deep breath. It's just a bad hour. It's just a bad night. In one week, you have forgotten about it. Yes, it will impact you for the best. Because, you know, like, after rain, there is a rainbow. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and, and also, no matter what happens, you will probably have 0.55 levers in your pocket. You can go and buy a pack of noodles. Yes. Yeah. If everything goes wrong, I mean. Yeah. yeah. Or, or you can buy 70 to pinky. Uh, Balichka. Balichka, yeah, yeah, yeah. Next to under. Yeah. yeah. How to closer. cure depression 101 with Clea. Yeah. And then Genta and Jess and Helen. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so what I want advice is because when you're struggling with, you know, wanting to fit in, you definitely see people that you're like, oh, I those people are so cool, they're so my people, I want to be with them. No. <laughs> like, you don't want to be with them. Try. <laughs> like, yeah. if it doesn't happen you naturally, it's not just give up. Not, yeah. Because Just I like think with classes. The like biggest thing in this bubble that we are in is people liking but a group you don't, of people. You don't want to be effort sometimes. Mm? Sometimes you just uh, like things are not going to happen naturally mm-hmm. because you have like your own insecurity. <laughs> exactly. Like, so just let it go. I mean, the best advice I could give you, which is very very hard, is if you're yourself, those people will come to you. Yes. Yeah. 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 Forcing relationships usually ends up not good so I, I I agree with what you say um, one thing I tend to do that I would advise everyone else not to do is isolate myself when I'm sad or when I have my struggles with my mental health usually what happens is I lock myself in my room for days I miss class I don't eat I don't do anything I just sit there like a sad sushi yeah, I roll I do the same thing. so what happens is that while I'm there laying in my bed, I think that I don't have the motivation or will or energy to and do you don't. anything. <laughs> like I, I constantly, I constantly uh, convince myself um, that that I, I, I actually don't have the energy to do things. But when something happens and it forces me to get up, when I'm actually outside and like running errands and things, I, I, I realize that it, it was basically me convincing myself I couldn't the whole time. So, yeah. even when you, even when you feel very like physically powerless to, to get out of, to get out of bed it's honestly just something you're telling to yourself so just force yourself out of bed get out there talk to people you're gonna feel better yeah face your fears and at least try find yes. the source of anxiety 
um, uh, yeah, like if whatever is causing you anxiety, whatever is causing you depression. Yes. <laughs> Georg is very depressing. <laughs> it's like, stop. Yes. Just so, go and clear it out, take it out of your chest. It always helps. Talking things out with someone, sharing it with a friend, with a lover, with a partner, with, with a, a diary. family. With a diary, yes. That's very useful. Yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah, I do as well. <laughs> okay. So hopefully you didn't feel alone. Hopefully you did get some useful tips. Yeah. Yes, we support you in <laughs> this around campus. You can, I don't know, do you do you like to be hugged by strangers? Yes, I like I hugs. Don't. <laughs> yeah. I'm not a very it's social person. Unless I like you're hugs. hot. <laughs> see? <laughs> you just met some wonderful girls. <laughs> so if you ke- see us on campus, totally say hi. And, you know, don't hug me. The same thing. And don't hug Claire, yes. Hug her. Yeah, yeah, sure, her. Hug. yeah, you have enough people to hug, just ignore yes. her. <laughs> so thank you for watching this week's episode hope to see you uh you know hope that you watch us again next time uh, make sure to like subscribe and maybe leave a comment <laughs> thank you bye, bye. bye.